Even if you never plan to build a single Apex app, you can still get enormous value from installing Apex. So hear me out here. This might seem a bit controversial. Ask Tom, the site that myself and Chris Saxon look after, is written in Apex. It's been going for 20 years. I'm a massive, huge fan of Apex. I think it's one of the great success stories of Oracle Corporation. But this video is about how perhaps the best part of Apex might be the parts that you might not even use. I would make an argument that even if you never plan to build a single Apex app, as short-sighted as that may be, you can still get enormous value from installing Apex. Let me explain. I log onto the database and I'll run this query. I'm going to query from DBA synonyms where the owner is Apex. So these are public synonyms probably that Apex has exposed. And I'm only interested in the ones that are owned by Apex and are of object type of package. So I'm looking for public synonyms to things that are owned by Apex that are packages. And as you can see, I get 59 results. These are all packages that are required to run Apex, but in the act of doing so, in having them installed on your system, they also offer opportunities to you to exploit the functionality within them, even if you never build an Apex application. Let me just grab a couple of these to show you how much potential there is for you to take advantage of. There's an Apex automation package. Now, even if you don't build Apex applications, you could use the Apex Builder to define what we call automations. That might be refreshing data from, say, a REST service, etc. Things that you would have to laboriously code by yourself can be managed with automations, and it hooks into the job scheduler to take care of refreshing that data on a regular basis. So Apex Automation is a lovely wrapper around the ability to do regular things around the job scheduler. Then there's Apex Data Export. I'm sure all of us at some stage have written some utility of our own, typically probably using UTL file, to unload some data in, say, CSV format. But the world has moved on and CSV is seen as old school, and therefore we have to come up with new utilities, either third-party tools or homegrown ones to unload things like in XML or JSON, etc. Apex Data Export has all that built in. You can just nominate a query or a table and it will unload it to your choice of CSV, XML, JSON. Even if you want to unload something to an Excel spreadsheet, it can unload data to XLSX format as well. In the other direction, we've got the Apex Data Parser. Often we want to get data into our database and doing it with facilities such as SQL Loader or external tables can perhaps be a little bit complicated, especially to the novice. The Apex Data Parser package lets you simply nominate effectively a blob or some external source, and it will go through the effort of parsing it, trying to work out whether it's CSV, XML, JSON, etc., and load it into a table for you, or just expose it as a cursor, like a pipeline function, so you can query it and get relational results straight out of external data sources. There's the Apex JSON package. Because Apex has perhaps led the way in terms of modern application development, when certain JSON requirements were there, the facilities native to the Oracle database were not yet available. That came in 19C and the like. Apex JSON gives you some nice JSON handling facilities straight out of the database with that package. Some of these now have been usurped by native handling inside the database, but there are still plenty of facilities in there that you can take advantage of when it comes to manipulating JSON data. If you've ever needed to send an email from the database, in times gone by, you'd be poking around in the UTL SMTP package and also have to know a good deal about the mail communication protocols. That improved with Oracle 10 with UTL mail, but that was limited in its capacities. You had to only do certain things with it. If you're looking for a complete email solution, probably you don't need to look any further than the Apex Mail package. That lets you create emails as part of a transaction. They get put into a job queue. We have a background process that processes them and it handles things like mail retries if a remote mail server is down, etc. It's a much more complete implementation of sending email and it's all just sitting there inside the Apex Mail package. No work for you required. There's an Apex string package. Lots of cool little utilities in there, especially when it comes to handling clobs. 
Sometimes dealing with clobs can be a bit of a nuisance, but we've added plenty of wrappers inside that package to let you deal with them much more seamlessly. And if you're familiar with the Unix kind of functionality that comes with, say, printf, the ability to substitute values into a string while you're outputting it, there's also facilities like that inside Apex String. It has a partner package called Apex String Util, which lets you do things like clob to blob conversions, as well as encoding URLs, which can be useful when you're dealing with websites. In these modern times where data comes from all sorts of sources, we've got things like Apex Web Service, which lets you manage all the handling of calling a external REST API. That's very, very useful because if you've ever had to do that yourself using UTL HTTP with things like certificates and wallets and SSL, etc., all of that is done for you with a simple call to Apex Web Service. It makes the whole process much more easy. And finally, there's Apex Zip. Nowadays, people send data via zip files. If you've ever had to unzip something just because you wanted to get it into the database, Apex Zip can do that for you. You could load a blob as a zipped file into a database column, and Apex Zip will be able to extract files and unzip the contents for you. So hopefully that's just a taste of what you can get simply by installing Apex, even if you never plan to build an application. These facilities are effectively wrappers around existing database functions, but they've been extended to make it easier for you to use because we use them every day as the Apex team as well. I would argue that wherever database you have, install Apex, get access to these facilities because you have more power, more flexibility, and also these facilities are supported. Therefore, bug fixes and the like will come at regular intervals. Check them out. You won't be disappointed.